I think Tulsi Gabbard is going to do a great job in this position. All right, so let's get into it. So nearly 100 former national security officials alarmed at prospect of Gabbard leading Intel community. In the letter obtained by NBC News, the officials urged the Senate to carefully evaluate whether Gabbard is equipped for the position, which requires Senate uh, confirmation. Look, I think she's a great pick. Uh, I've been a... I hate using this word, but a fan, you know, of of Tulsi Gabbard's for a while now. She was one of the few Democrats that I actually really liked on the Democratic ticket, you know, a few years back. And I think her and RFK Jr. is another one are are really good uh, choices to head up some of these different spheres, you know, in the federal government. And look, you know, I'm only going to say this not to try to say that I've got some better insight than anybody else, but just from the things that I've seen. You know, so I worked in the intelligence community for a few years, uh, both in the military and then outside of the military for a federal contractor. And nothing crazy, nothing incredibly high up, but I will say, like all of, like the rest of the government, there's a lot of waste and bloat. And I do think that the intelligence apparatus needs to be reined in quite a bit, especially as it pertains to their activities involving American citizens including Tulsi Gabbard. She knows what it's like now to be, you know, (laughs) on a watch list. So I I do think there's a lot of things that need to be evaluated as far as the intelligence community is concerned. And I I think she'll do that, and I think she's going to do a good job. Nearly 100 former national security officials signed a letter criticizing President-elect Donald Trump's decision to nominate former Representative Tulsi Gabbard for Director of National Intelligence and uh, called for closed-door Senate hearings to review any government information about her. In the letter obtained by NBC News, the officials urged the Senate to carefully evaluate whether Gabbard is equipped for the position which requires Senate confirmation. I think she's equipped for the position. I don't know why she wouldn't be. Um, Granted, you know, she doesn't have like a long, you know, career of directly working in intelligence, I don't think, because I I don't remember exactly what she did in the military, but but she's been uh, been in Congress... So she's not, you know, somebody that's like, oh, I've I've been doing, you know, working in the intelligence community specifically for 30 years, right? But I think she will do a good job. And I think the big point here, again, is kind of just cleaning up the nonsense, draining the swamp, right, as they said. Several of Ms. Gabbard's past actions call into question her ability to deliver unbiased intelligence briefings to the president, Congress, and the entire national security apparatus, the letter said. Following her trip to Syria, for example, Ms. Gabbard aligned herself with Russian and Syrian officials. Don't really see a problem with here. I'd have to look into exactly what they're talking about. I know that the one of the things, one of the criticisms of her is that she's a Russian puppet, right? I don't think that's the case, uh, but that's certainly what her opponents say about her. I don't necessarily, but I don't know that having this particular position would color her opinion necessarily when it comes to intelligence briefings. Um, But again, I'd have to look into the actual specifics of what they're talking about when she says she allies herself with Russian and Syrian officials. I don't see any problem with that as far as, especially when it comes to, if the goal here is to prevent war, and to be honest, and if that would, if that's something that would be, that would lead her to this position, I don't think it's an issue. The former officials also proposed closed door hearings that would allow lawmakers to fully review any government files on Gabbard, a former Democratic House member from Hawaii. I also should point out too, that it was not too long ago that many individuals, many were retired, I think, at the point, but many individuals who were part of the intelligence community also signed a letter saying that the, I think it was the Biden laptop, or excuse me, Hunter Biden laptop issue was just a hoax and it had to do with Russian collusion. We also saw some intelligence community activity with the Hillary Clinton campaign and the Russian collusion with Trump and all of those things ended up to be bullshit. Um, Bullshit in one direction or the other, right? Obviously, the Hunter Biden laptop story was not bullshit. It was true. But the but the intelligence community, a bunch of officials from the intelligence community said, no, no, no. And again, this is one of the reasons why they're worried about, you know, Tulsi Gabbard kind of leading the intelligence apparatus is because there's going to be, it's going to be, I think, with her in charge, more difficult to lie to the American people, and in many cases to be a a puppet branch of the Democratic Party, okay? It's going to be harder for them to do that. That's why they're upset. 
Senate committees should consider in closed sessions all information available to the U.S. government when considering Ms. Gabbard's qualifications to manage our country's intelligence agencies, and more importantly, the protection of our intelligence sources and methods. I don't think that's going to be called into question here. I don't think with Tulsi Gabbard in charge of the intelligence community, all of a sudden there's going to be any threat or problem in protecting uh, intelligence sources. The letters signed uh, signers include Wendy Sherman, former deputy, don't care. Uh, Ian Kelly, okay, uh, a bunch of people don't really care. Gabbard has previously faced criticism for sympathetic comments about U.S. adversaries. Days after Russia invaded Ukraine, Gabbard called for Ukraine to be a neutral country, urging people to embrace the spirit of aloha. Again, don't really see an issue with this. Again, and it's it's one of those things where if the goal here is to uh, prevent further war and certainly to prevent the United States' involvement in war, which thankfully there's a very huge like anti-war sentiment in this country right now. It's been pretty great. If that's the goal, then I don't there's nothing wrong with a particular like a comment like this. Right? Like this isn't, you know, it, it's not Russia attacking the United States. It's not them on our own soil attacking our citizens and she's saying, "Well, no, no, no." No. It's something incredibly far removed from us. And so if the goal here, again, this is kind of like what, what Trump was doing when he was when he was talking about, you know, Kim Jong-un or or Putin is if the goal is to be diplomatic and find solutions here outside of war, then you can't just kind of go in a guns blazing into negotiations, right? It doesn't work that way. So in 2017, Gabbard made an announcement trip to Syria to meet President Bashar al-Assad, the country's authoritarian leader. The trip sparked bipartisan criticism. This, the same year, she cast doubt on the U.S. owned intelligence ag agency's conclusion that Assad's government was responsible for a chemical weapons attack on Syrians. Again, don't really see a problem with being skeptical of these types of things. I mean, there were no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, right? Intelligence community sure said there were. In 2017, Gabbard made an announcement trip to Syria to meet... Oh, wait, that was the... The letter also argued that Gabbard would be the least experienced person to hold the director position since it was created in 2004. The Senate must carefully evaluate whether Ms. Gabbard is equipped to effectively oversee an organizational structure as unique and large as the National Intelligence Program, and also the effect of her holding this position on the willingness of our closest allies to share intelligence with the United States. Don't really think this is going to be called into question either, as far as the willingness of closest allies to share intelligence with the U.S. Don't really think that's going to be a problem. And again, you know, I'd like to see, you know, when they say as unique and as large as the National Intelligence Program, I'd like to see that reduce quite a bit, actually, like I mentioned earlier. The letter was addressed to Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. Uh, Thune's office did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Schumer's office referred to a letter he sent to Thune this week about the confirmation process in which he said Democrats are ready to and willing to work with Senate Republicans to provide advice and consent on Trump's nominations. Reach for comment, a spokesperson for Gabbard and the Trump transition team slammed the letter as well as the other signers' credentials. Yeah, and look, a lot of this is probably going to... A lot of this is probably coming also from the fact that Tulsi Gabbard has moved away from the Democratic Party. You know, uh, you know, look, look no further than what the Democratic Party did to... Andrew Yang, or to Bernie Sanders. These intel off officials continue to use classification as a partisan weapon to smear and imply things about their political enemy without putting the facts out. Henning continued, Gabbard is just one of Trump's expected nominees who is facing headwinds. Trump's picked to lead the Defense Department, Pete Hegs, uh, Hegs, Hegseth. Yeah, I, I, he's, uh, yeah, I think, I don't, th this must be old. Let me see. No, no, okay. I thought Hegseth was out. But anyway, look, uh, at the end of the day, I think Tulsi Gabbard's a good choice. I think she's going to do a great job. And, you know, I, I hope her, along with RFK Jr. and some of these other picks, are kind of going to, you know, steer steer the federal government into a better direction. I'm really looking forward to seeing Vivek and Elon work uh, to reduce, you know, government spending, government waste. And, and hopefully that does carry over into these other areas like you know, the intelligence community. So it, it, the intelligence community is a lot like, you know, many of these other, other agencies under the federal government where there's a lot of people really not doing too much. And you re yeah, you really don't need to be that big and bloated. <laughs> but anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. If you disagree with anything I've said, please let me know why and take care. Mm -hmm.